Good morning, Grace Christian Center. Good morning, Grace Christian Center. Please turn with me, turn with me to Acts chapter 16, verse 22. And the title of the sermon this morning is Chains That Can Set You Free. The chains that can set you free. Does that make sense this morning? Chains are meant to hold something down. You know, when we hear the word chain, chains, and we use that with free, it don't go together, does it? That's the message this morning. The chains that can set you free. We're going to figure out what that means. There was two missionaries by the name of Paul and Silas. They were walking on the face of the earth in biblical times. And they were doing a great work for God. And it came to be that they had made some converts to Jesus Christ. And the, the, the people in that town, the authorities, were so upset with Paul and Silas because they had brought the gospel of Jesus Christ to their town. And so therefore, they wanted to have them arrested. So they falsely accused them. They made uh, threats against them. And uh, the Roman authorities arrested them. And the Roman authorities beat them for simply preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's, it's something that the church in America cannot understand this morning. Because there is no persecution for your faith in Christ on this land. Yet. And I've said it for quite a number of years now that if Jesus Christ does not return anytime soon, this generation will see the Bible outlawed in the United States of America. I'm not a prophet. But I, I do have an ear, and I do hear what the Spirit of God is saying to His church. It would be wrong of God not to speak to the shepherds, to warn the church. But God is not wrong, and God does speak to the shepherds. God does speak to the watchmen to warn the people. And I'm, I'm simply just a watchman. In, in this generation, America will witness, this generation will witness the Bible being outlawed in the United States of America. The United States Constitution will one day be taken away from you. It will happen. But for the Christian, consider it a pure joy. Because it's to the end. When we see these things happening, it will be the beginning for us as we begin to see Christ more and more. Paul and Silas were experiencing such intense hardship. Like I said, they were missionaries. They were going around opening churches throughout the Middle East. And they came up to a part of the land where they were just intensely persecuted. They were arrested. They were put in jail. And I'm going to pick up on a story here where it begins in Acts chapter 16 verse 22. It says, The crowd rose up together against them, and the chief magistrates tore their robes off of them and proceeded to order Paul and Silas to be beaten with rods. And when they had struck them with many blows... They threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. And he, having received such a command, threw them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, you don't have to go there with me right now, but 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 says, Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Now that's the word of God. 2 Timothy 3.12 it says, Indeed, all who, who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Paul experienced that. Silas experienced that. They were doing a godly thing for the Lord. They were pleasing to the Lord, but to men's eyes it was an abomination. To men, they were evildoers. But this word was fulfilled. And see, like I said, today in America, Christians, you can't really understand this kind of persecution. Yes, to a certain point, we may have certain kinds of persecution for being a Christian, but nowhere near this kind of persecution. But it is quickly coming to the United States of America. It is coming. Physical persecution is coming. It's happening everywhere outside the United States of America. Right down in Mexico. Church, Christian churches are being burned down. Pastors are being shot, killed. Their wives being raped and murdered. It is happening, guys, very right next door. In Canada, they're very, pretty much on the verge of wanting to outlaw Christianity. And I'm not making this stuff up. 
It is happening. America is the last stronghold place of, of, of the freedom of the gospel being preached. But that is quickly coming to a close. But Paul said in 2 Timothy, Paul was the author of 2 Timothy, and he said the persecution will come to the believer of Christ. Now, when Paul and Silas were put into prison, it says that they were beaten with many blows and that they were put into the most inner room of the prison. They weren't put on the outside where they could see daylight and see the moon. Right? They were put into the most inner parts of the prison where, where they were closed out from society, where they thought, you know, and, and think about this. When you go to jail today and they want to put you away from everybody else because they consider you to be very bad, they put you, what, in something called the hole. And I, at being in, in the prison ministry, I've seen where they put men in those places and those men come out psychotic. They're talking to themselves that they're very violent. They're, uh, I've seen these men. I've seen them fight the guards, bite them, punch them. And these guards go in with riot gear and, and the guards have to have it on video camera so that way they can see what happens if anything goes down. I've seen this with my own eyes. And so they thought, and it, that, that's been the mentality of man from the very beginning. Very violent. And so they thought they could hush these two disciples of Christ by putting them in the most inner parts of the prison. And so these men were in the prison. And it goes on to say in verse 25. It says, But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there came a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. Everyone's chains were unfastened. Because of two men... In the most inner part of the prison, everyone in the prison was benefiting from the belief of these men. Now, there's so much in what we just read. Paul and Silas were in jail with chains and stocks on them. And they weren't at the midnight hour crying, saying, Oh, what are we going to do? Let's write our attorney a letter. Let's call out our friends. And They were thanking God for being persecuted. For their testimony of Christ. They were singing songs guys. They were having church. In the middle of the most hard times of their lives. When people go through the most hardest times in their lives. You know what? They, don't, they can't even think about going to church. They can't even think about praying. They can't even think about just stopping everything. And just seeking God. And say God. What, why am I going through this? Oh, and you see Paul and Silas. They didn't even have to ask that question. They knew why they were in prison. So therefore, they weren't trying to rack their brains and say, why am I in this situation? They were thinking, God, they already knew why. They didn't need to ask God these questions. And Christian, if you're doing the best that God has called you to do, why do you have to rack your brains and say, why is this happening to me? Why is that? You know you have an enemy out there. You know you have an enemy who comes to kill, steal, and destroy every part of you, your family, your children. But when you do what God has called you to do, and you can stand in the midst of the storm and you can sing songs to God and praise His holy name. The chains will come off. And that's where we go back to the title of this sermon. Chains that can set you free. The enemy will put chains on you. But God says that when you praise Him, when you worship Him, when you trust in Him, those chains must come off. They must come off. Chains of depression... Chains of oppression, chains of perversion, ch ch chains of, of, you name it, of, of addiction, chains of, chains of a perverted mind. I, I, I can go on and on. The chains must come off according to the Word of God. If you praise Him, if you believe in Him, if you seek Him. Many of us have gone through some hard times in our lives and we found ourselves laying in that bed in the middle of the night wondering what are we going to do? When, we, when this formula in the Bible simply says, just trust in God. Sing to the Lord. Say, Lord, it looks dark around me, but I know your light is shining upon me. That, that is the, the, the song that the believer must sing. The joy of the Lord, it confuses the world. But it does speak truth to those who are in search of truth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'll just read this quickly to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14, it says, 
Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit. Now he's talking to the Christian, okay? But the spirit who is from God. That's the Holy Spirit. So that we, the Christian, may know the things that are freely given to us by God. Which things we also speak. Not in words taught by human wisdom. Not by universities. Well, you can't understand God by a university, by seminaries. You're just not going to get there. It says here, but we are understand these things that are taught by the Spirit of God, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man, meaning a man of the world, a man who doesn't believe in God, says, but a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because these people are, dis are spiritually disconnected. Now, what that means is, is that when the world looks at the church, when the world looks at the Christian, the holy roller, the world cannot understand the things of God. The world cannot understand the moving of the Holy Spirit. You see, when Paul was singing in that prison, when Silas was singing in that prison, the, the inmates were looking at him like, what are these, these crazy guys doing? They're singing, and they're in the most inner part of the prison. Don't they know that they're going to be starved to death here pretty soon? Don't they know that in about six hours, they're going to go in there and beat them just for singing all night long? Don't they know that? The world can't understand the joy of the Lord. But the Christian does. These men were singing... But you know what? It benefited those around them. Your persecution as a faithful witness of Christ will result in salvation for others. Do you know that? Do you know Christian? I'm speaking, I speak to you by way of the video. Do you know, and I speak to the Christian right now. Do you know that all the troubles and the trials that you're going through, it is not, it, it, yes, it's to grow you, to allow you to grow your faith, but more importantly, it's to allow others to, that are seeing your afflictions, it's allowing others to understand the power of God so that they may be saved also. So when the next time you're going through trials and tribulations, stop your crying. Stop your whining. Grow up. Call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says you call upon the name of the Lord, you'll be what? You'll be saved. We Christians, we, we, we whine and cry like little babies. When we have the very power of God within us, within these bodies... I don't care what's coming against you. Death, sickness, it, it doesn't matter. Yes, there's a time for mourning. There's a time for weeping. But there's a time for laughter. There's a time for war, but there's also a time for peace. There is a time for these things. When those who are in, in sorrow and crying, cry with them, hug them, love them. But we must always, as Christians, demonstrate the faithfulness of God, even in our own personal tribulations. Because others are watching the Christian looking for God. Other, the world will only find God through His people. And that's how these inmates found God. In verse 27, it says, When the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that all the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice. You see, the Christian must cry out with a loud voice. So don't get mad when a preacher starts preaching loud. Because when the Spirit of God moves, it, 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 a physical thing happens in the heart of man. We get loud. It, Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Do not harm yourselves, for we are all here. And he called for the lights. The jailer called for the lights. And he rushed in and he was trembling with fear. And he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out of the jail, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The jailers knew he was, they were wrong with God. They realized now that they had imprisoned men of God. You see, we, the Bible says that there may be a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it can lead to death. That's what the Bible says. And these men thought, these jailers thought that they were living right for, for, in their lives. They thought they were honoring God and their country. Not even realized that they had imprisoned the men of God. And when the, when the chains broke off, and when the earthquake happened, and when the doors flew open, and when the man of God spoke and said, don't kill yourself, because this jailer, he's like, oh man, I, I, I blew it. You know, Caesar is going to have me beheaded. I failed my job. They're going to kill me. Them, these Romans were brutal. And the Roman jailer, he's like, I'm going, to, I'm going to just kill myself. And see, some, to a lot of people, death may seem like a good option. 
Death may seem like a good option, but it's not. Paul stopped him. You see, the Christian can stop someone from killing themselves. That's the power of God. Paul said it with a loud voice, Don't do that! We're all here! God is here! He said, The chains that you thought would hold us down and persecute us are actually, these chains have set us free. You can break the chains of oppression by just praising God and believing in Him. Instead of having to go to psychiatric help, instead of having to take all these medicines that you think will make your body right, and you know, and I'm not against all doctors, and you know, God blesses doctors and gives them wisdom to help the human body, yes. But also man can take that to the most extreme also. This man said, what must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas were in that jail so that these jailers can be saved. You may go through dark times in your life so that others around you can see your, your victorious warfare and they'll be saved through it. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about that? Have we failed God here lately by allowing the enemy to overrun us? Verse 31, they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. See, God, God wants the whole household. See, Joshua was an old man in the, in the Old Testament. Joshua, he had come to the end of his walk. He was an old man. He did all he was called to do. And he looked at all of Israel and Joshua said, you can go and serve any God you want. You can do whatever you want to do. I know some of you are going to do that. And I'm paraphrasing what Joshua said. But he said, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And you see, God wants the whole household. And that's why it's so important that the whole family come to church together. It's so important. God wants the whole household. And coincidentally, so does Satan. Satan wants the whole household too. But you see, just as the Bible says, don't give the devil a foothold. I believe that you can turn that around and say, just give God a foothold. Give God a foothold. Just give, give Him a little and see what God can do. Verse 32, And they spoke the word of the Lord to the jailer, together with all who were in his house. And the jailer took them at that very hour of the night, and he washed their wounds. Because he had beat them. And he washed their wounds. And immediately he was baptized, he and all his household. And he brought them into his house, and he set food before them and rejoiced greatly, having believed in God with his whole household. You hear that? Just several hours earlier, this jailer was their master. He was beating them, beating them, beating them. But because they believed in God. And the Bible says we are not at battle with flesh and blood, but with powers of darkness. Even though Paul and Silas, they knew this. They just kept praising God. They were probably saying in that jail, Lord, forgive that jailer what he did. He don't know what he's doing. You know why? Because that's what Jesus said. Jesus was on the cross and Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I believe everyone who was at the cross when Jesus said that, I believe every single one of them got saved. Jewish teachings go on to teach that Caiaphas later on became a Christian. The Jewish, the, the, one of the Jewish Pharisees who, who had Jesus on that cross Later on in life, he became a Christian. He went out silently into the, into the history books. Nobody knew of his, uh, what he had done, but he just, went by, he just went off and he believed in Christ. And so when you're being persecuted by man, you must pray for them. You must pray for them. That jailer, he took them and he clothed them. He washed their wounds. He washed the blood. The very blood that he, he was responsible for, he was washing that off of them. He was loving them. He was feeding them. He brought them into his house. He was, he was greatly rejoicing because he was a new man. And this is the point I want to bring up to you. Church, this is going to hit us in the heart. And I want you to all to listen, please. You call yourself a Christian? Do you call yourself a Christian? Say amen. Raise your hand if you call yourself a Christian. Okay, this is for you. The point of this is this. In Mark 10.45, it says this here. For even the Son of Man did not come to serve, not come to be served, but the Son of Man came to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. What did this jailer do? When he got saved, what did this jailer do? 
Please answer me. Somebody, church, talk to me. He served. Evidence of being saved. Evidence of being a Christian. I want all you young people to hear me out. Evidence that you're a Christian is that you begin to serve. That you begin to serve. Matthew, you think you're serving people food. But are you really serving God? Anna, you think you're serving people at the school. But are you really serving God? Are we really serving God? Evidence of being saved is that you begin to serve others for the glory of God. Are we serving God in this capacity that this jailer was? Are, are, what I mean by that is this. We, there, there are over 60 members in this church and we have almost 30 people serving in the ministry here. That is a great number of people serving in the ministry here. And I don't take credit for that. I give that all to God. Because He's moving in their hearts. But it's biblical. It is biblical to be a Christian and to be active in ministry. And if you're a Christian and you're not active in ministry, you are quenching the Spirit of God. That is a hard pill to swallow. But that is biblical. You must be having an active ministry. You must be going out there and being active and loving people and serving people and, and helping people. Because that's what Christianity is all about. It's about helping others. If you're going to your job and getting a paycheck thinking you're helping people out, well, to a certain point you are. But you know what? You're getting a reward for that. You're getting paid for that. We must go deeper than that. We must go deeper than that. You need to ask God. You listen to my way to video. We need to ask God. How can I serve people to bring glory to God? You're not serving to get recognition for yourself. This jailer, he, his house was saved. He had, in one night, this jailer had realized if he was 50 years old, 40 years old, 60 years old, I don't know. But this jailer had come in one night to a realization that the way he had been living his whole life was wrong. And had he died that night, he would have been in hell for eternity. Think about the joy he had when he came to a realization of all that. And think about his mind set. Now that he realized this, and he wanted to honor God, because now he understands what Jesus did on that cross. He understands what the sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross. And when we understand what Jesus really did on that cross, we're going to want to stand up, and we're going to come to God, and we're going to say, God, what can I do for you? God, how can I help you? It's, it's natural in the, in, in the lives of children. When the parents are so good to them, a good child will come up and they will do anything for their parent. If they see their parent in need, they want to be there to help their parent. That's what a good child does. That's, what, that, that's something that only God can put in the heart of a person. How much more, if we treat our parents on the world like this, how much more should we treat our Heavenly Father? When we realize what He did, when He got off of His throne, and He came down to the earth in the form of man, Jesus Christ, and He died on a cross, didn't have to do that, but He did it because He wanted us to come back home. When we come to a realization of what God did on that cross, the chains will come off of us, and we will be free to be who God called us to be. And we're going to really begin to live. And we're not going to be held under the oppression that we had for so many years. We're not going to be in darkness anymore. We're going to be in the light because He is in the light. And we're going to be drawn into His presence. And we're going to understand where God is calling us to go. Some of us are, of whatever age you may be, and, and I'm speaking to you by way of video, uh, some of you, you're, you're at a point in your life where you don't know whether to go left or right. You don't know. You're, you're, you're confused. And that's not from God, because God is not the author of confusion. But you need direction. It begins with being saved. By having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. When Jesus comes into you, the drinking, the smoking, the immorality thoughts, they're going to go. For some, it's instantly... And for some, it's over a very quick process. But it's not a slow process because when the Holy Spirit of God comes, He quickly convicts the heart because He's cleaning the house up. He's cleaning up the temple. And I know what I'm talking about because in an instant, I came to the Lord on, as a drunk man. And no one's going to tell me 
that you can't, you cannot, addiction is hard and it takes time to break addictions. I, I, I will fight you to the death on that. The power of God can break any addiction. I don't care what it is. God has healed people of AIDS. Not everyone's been healed of AIDS. But God has done this for His glory in some cases. God has grown back limbs of people who are missing arms in Africa. And their arms came back out in this past year alone. Incredible things have happened. And it's because they were glorifying God. Because their hearts were totally given to God. And see, we can't see things like that in America because we're so distracted by the things in, in, our, in our society. We're too busy doing this on our cell phones and looking at Facebook and what our friends are saying. And we got the TV on and we're seeing what's on TV and we're, we're, we're entertained. We want to be entertained. We want to be entertained. We want to be entertained. When the Bible teaches that this jailer, when he became a Christian, he wanted to serve. It was no longer about him, but it was about what he could do for the glory of God. What He could do for the glory of God. And it makes me sick because I know there's some Christians that, that have been in the, Christ, in the body of Christ for 20, 30 years. And they're sitting there, well, I've done a lot for God. You better get humble yourself, man, woman. You have done nothing for God yet. We can never outgive God. If you've been serving God on this earth 60 years, you haven't even put a dent in it. We owe God eternity. Amen. We cannot understand what He has done for us. And we, we must surrender our hearts to Christ. He, his love, oh, His love, uh, my mind cannot even understand, the, comprehend the love that He has for us. We've been, you know, having, a, people came here last, the, the, a couple nights ago and wrote 666 on our, on our sidewalk here. They tap on our windows at night, trying to scare us. What, what are they trying to accomplish? They're listening to their father, the devil. We pray for them. Lord, save them. Lord, open their hearts. But the, the, when the God has put the call in your life to do something, you must follow through. You must do it because He is making a way for you. Don't be afraid. Fear does not come from God. Don't be afraid of the world and what you think the world can do to you. But the Bible says, rather fear God. Who knows the very number of hairs on your head? Somebody can say, like Eric, I don't have any hair. Eric, you've got hair on your head. You know, God knows. God knows every part of your DNA. He wove you together in the womb of your mother. He knows everything you're going to say before you even say it. But we must put our faith to action. And in doing that, the chains will set us free. The chains will come off. Paul and Silas put their faith to action. They looked around their situation. They saw the chains on them. They, they saw the beatings and the blood on them. They were bloodied. But their faith was put to action by praising God. Hallelujah. I'll fly away, oh glory. That they sang to God. And the chains came off. Their faith was put to action. And it saved the inmates in the prison. And it turned the hearts of the jailers. And when the jailers saw this and got saved, because they said, what, what must we do? And they, what did Paul tell them? Paul said, accept Jesus. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your whole family will be saved. Because when a man in the house gets saved, guess what? It turns the hearts of the children. It turns the hearts of the wife. That's the biblical that's what happened. And there are far too many men in America who are not standing up and being a man of God. There are far too many men in America that, that have ran away from the family. And they've run away from God. And this has to stop. This has to stop. My, you know, my, the desire of my heart for, for the longest is that all the men in this church would stand up with one belief. And that we would come together and just start praying. Every single man, every single man, we would just come to this church and pray on a Saturday morning and begin to pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on, on, on our families and on our community. But I cannot just have this desire. It's got to well up from you. 
men have run away. But this man understood that he was wrong. And his faith, when he got saved, what did he, his faith immediately went into action. Is your faith being put into action right now? Answer that yourselves in your heart right now. You say you're a Christian. You, you say you're a believer of Christ. You say you're going to heaven. I'm not here to doubt that. Praise the Lord. That's, that's my desire. You think I'm up here to preach to make you feel bad so you can go home and turn on the TV and say, forget that. No, that's not what I want. I want you to be encouraged. And I want you to find who God really destined you to be. But truth has to be spoken to all of us. I get in line this, last night to listen to this. And Lord, you've got to speak to me first. This has got to convict my heart before it can even speak to anybody else. I've got my own cross to carry. I've got my own family to raise. Much less pastor a church. But we can do it when our hearts have been sincerely turned to Christ. And I speak to the mothers who are raising their children on their own. God will give you a double portion. Oh, I have such respect for these women. That they're doing both mother and father roles. These women may have made mistakes. Or maybe they, they, just did, they, they, they went ahead of God and they got with a man and had children. The man ran off. They may, they may have ran ahead of God and shouldn't have done that. But the women are sticking it out. And the heart of a mother is deep. The heart of a mother is so deep. There are so many single mothers out there. And, and I pray and I know God has given you a double anointing. But they need help. And if there's anyone listening to me, any men, if it's speaking to your heart right now, you need to make things right with God. And you need to get your house in order. You must do it for, for the glory of God. The Lord came into the house. The Lord blessed them. And the house was saved. The chains that the jailer wants to use to keep people down. Those chains were now broken. I believe that man walked away from his job. I believe that Roman jailer did that. It don't say what had happened to him after this. But I believe he was a new creation in Christ. And I believe God showed him a new direction in life. And the question remains. The question remains for us today in this room. And those listening by video. Is your faith being put to action? Is your faith being put to action? Somebody recently went on a media fast. I'm curious to hear what happened. A while back I spoke about that. I said, for seven days or five days, whatever it may be, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, stay away from all media, TV, radio, computers. Having fun on the phone. Only business. And let's, see, uh, let's see what happens. There's so many distractions out there. So many distractions. What had happened if that happened in our time when the jailer was in the jail? He had his, his, had his headphones on, listening to something on YouTube. And God broke free Paul and Silas. The earthquake happened and prisoners came out of the jail. And here's this jailer on his, on his iPhone. And God's moving. But this jailer's busy doing this. That's what's happening in America right now. We are so consumed with me, me, me. We're so consumed with us. It's time for the real Christian to stand up. It's time for the real Christian to walk the walk. I pray God convicts our hearts. Because when I go home and follow in the footsteps of my grandmother, oh, I sure hope I did right by the Lord. I sure hope I do right. Because I've stored so much treasure in heaven. I've got so much invested in heaven. And when you start investing in heaven, and you start understanding how important heaven really is and how important God really is, your walk with Christ becomes sincere. And you don't, you don't really care who it is. Paul wrote 
I believe it was Paul. He wrote, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God. It is the power of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the cross. It is the power of God. And we don't have to wear a chain with a cross. Or we don't have to get tattoos and pictures of Jesus or the cross on our arm. No, no, no. It's in our heart. And that's where God looks at. God looked at the heart of this jailer and the chains just came off. God looked at the heart of Paul and Silas and the chains just came off. God's going to look at your heart. And if it's right and ready, the chains will come off. Amen? Amen. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus.